Hello everyone, this is Teddy Kekstad from Forex Trading Unlocked and we are here on August the 1st. We have a new month kicking off the middle of the third quarter here. We got a lot to talk about. It was a pretty interesting week last week to digest from the uh, Forex markets. Don't have to tell any of you about that with the way the numbers popped everything around. Before we get into everything real quick, we just want to show you our disclaimer to remind you that this is for illustrative and educational purposes only and uh, make sure you just give that a little view real quick um, and let's see there we go and for those of you that are on discord and twitch we're having some issues with our streamer so just in case if you can't hear stuff properly or if the video seems a little choppy um, just leave a little comment so we can uh, get on that right away and make sure we get it cleared up we're just having some issues here with the way our uh, so had some upgrades and you know how these things are with computers so it's been a really interesting morning when it comes to uh, how that's working out right now all right so let's see are we streaming YouTube I don't know if any of you guys can give me a little heads up if you are getting the signal put something in the chat or something because it doesn't look like it's going out to YouTube but Twitch it does. Okay, so Twitch I got three followers. All right, so yeah, we got some. You guys are live. All right, so we're going to keep on going with this since you guys are around. I didn't want to be talking to myself here. Um, so real quick, uh, if you haven't done so already, please uh, f subscribe to our YouTube or Twitch channel, Forex Trading Unlocked. And also check out the book High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns, available on Amazon.com. All right, so with that being said, we got our screen up. Okay, so Twitch, you guys are live. You guys are working. This is good. Discord, it looks like you guys are fine too. We got a couple people there. And YouTube, you're the one that we have the issue with. You're not streaming. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, well, that is what it is, right? All right, so if you haven't done so also, if you could share it on Twitter or stream here, especially since it's down on YouTube, it would really help. <laughs> so um, I'm just doing that real quick all right so we're going to talk about the dollar index you got the www.forex-trading-unlock.com website pulled up already and as you can see the dollar index came down towards our extended target zone uh, and we had a nice little bounce uh, midday uh, on Friday and today the dollar is once again under pressure so one of the reasons why we have the dollar under pressure is we have the uh, interest rate quadrant the 30-year and the 10-year notes uh, have been rallying for the past uh, couple of weeks especially through the Fed meeting and is with after the speak that we had from the uh, uh, from the US Fed it's kind of a wishy-washy um, event. So sorry if I'm not looking at you. I gotta look at these other monitors to make sure we get this everything here for our analysis and for what's going on with the markets. So for compliance sake, I just want to let you know that we will let you know whether we're long or short, but we don't want you trying to follow these trades. Remember, once you're in and you have a plan, that's one thing, but don't go chasing other people's trades. So. Uh, all right, so dollar index once again is treading lower down towards this upper end of our extended downside target band. Let's take a look at the euro US dollar, which is the number one component of the dollar index. As you can see, it's pressing those highs again. We came off of a lower move high. We established a higher move low last week. And now today we are trying to push through and take out the high from a week and a half ago up into our upside corrective target zone. Now, of all the uh, Forex pairs, I think that the Euro is going to struggle with the rally the most. I, I see it getting possibly up to this 103.70 area, the, um, the top upper end of this corrective zone. We have this trend line that's keeping the market, uh, this trend intact. Right now, this is still viewed as an upside correction for the Euro US dollar. Um, so I don't know how many of you are out there um, that maybe have the. Um, uh, are uh, long the euro US dollar or short the euro US, euro US dollar but any of you that are on discord uh, you know or on uh, twitch because obviously YouTube is down uh, why don't you uh, let us know what you got going on uh, in the euro US dollar and of course you can ask any questions during this video about any other market as well so um, so right now we can see that we have the market not quite a solid bid but we have all the numbers are out we have the uh, US markets are open we have the Asian and the European markets, which are now closed, and now we are heading into the lunchtime trade on a Monday, starting the quarter off. 
Now we have a lot of window dressing going on with the stock market because we had end of the month on Friday and beginning of the month today. So this is a lot where you have a lot of money coming into the equity markets, which is helping to give them a boost. So I wouldn't give so much credence to a lot of what is going on in the trade today. Remember, we are at the beginning of the month, end of the month cycle. So it's a lot of times when you have a lot of money being put into the market, regardless of whether it's going up or down. So it's helping to sustain and prop it up a little bit today. This is something I just want you to be very mindful of as we uh, get into our analysis for today. So, and very interesting also, we have the unemployment and we have uh, this week and then we have CPI coming up next week, which if you didn't see how it bounced around the market the last time, I guarantee you it's going to probably have a very similar impact once again. Um, all right, so let's put this out. Okay, there we go. All right, just trying to tweet out a little bit about what's going on with this video, okay. All right, so Euro US dollar, once again, um, we've been making higher move highs and higher move lows on an intraday basis, and now it's pushing on the daily basis. Once again, this is a correction. We are expecting this to start to wind down. Now, one of the things that's holding this, this correction intact is the rallying interest rate market, which we talked about at the very beginning of the webinar that's influencing the dollar that's putting pressure on the dollar and helping to lift these other currencies so it's not that the euro is very strong right now um, after having been beaten down for months that's not the case at all in fact actually the euro is in a lot of trouble with the eu and their economy and everything um, but because of the interest rate move which interest rates are a function of currency pricing that is not necessarily making the dollar bearish, but it is making it less bullish than it was. And we don't know exactly how the ECB is going to follow through with their interest rate hiking. Um, you got to remember that this is the first hiking that they've been doing in over 20 years. You know, it's basically almost 25 years. So uh, that is a big deal. The question is, is how aggressive are they going to be? I, that's something that remains to be seen. I don't want to try and put the cart before the horse when it comes to what the EU is doing. But what I do know is that they're having a lot of problems over in the EU as far as um, dissension within the EU countries. Uh, right now you have a huge push for uh, out of Germany to um, get rid of the Polish currency. The Polish uh, the country of Poland still uses, does use the euro, but they, the EU wants them to make it their sole currency, meaning they want to completely get rid of um, their Polish uh, sovereign currency. Uh, there's also there's some other things that they want to impose on them, especially energy restrictions, which they're doing all across uh, Germany. This is not made up news. This is a fact. They are restricting how much gas you can buy, how much heat you can have in your house, how much electricity. Everything is being cut back and as far as how much usage you can have. So they're either limiting it or they're, they're cutting back during certain times, just like when you have during the summer, during drought conditions, and there's uh, you have like no watering your lawn kind of stuff. Although this is... People don't care if their grass burns in the summertime, but they do want to have water and they do want to have heat and they do want to have electricity so they can keep their food fresh, you know, as well. So there's a lot of problems with that. Uh, so the Green New Deal, there's a lot of strife, strife in Germany right now where the government's going one way. Um, it's still leaning towards the way Angela Merkel put them on the Green New, Green New Deal 10 years ago, and it is just completely shattering their economy. So I don't think you're going to get a rally out of the euro US dollar in a, in a big sense. Uh, we may push this upper boundary up to 104.86. This I believe would be probably the high of any big rally um, that we could see. I don't even think 103.70 is going to be able to cross. Um, it's not going to be able to sustain a trade above that if it spikes above it. Uh, just because of these other fundamental factors. So the only thing that could possibly maybe give them a little bit of a push, but it will not last, would be if the ECB aggressively raises rates um, in the midst of our Fed maybe not necessarily being as aggressive. Like if we go back to half point raise in September, or even let's say they do a quarter point, which doesn't seem to fit the narrative they've had because now they're getting wishy-washy with saying that they're going to have to watch the data over the next two months. Well, yeah, of course you have to watch the data. You should always be watching the data. And being data dependent only now, what does that mean? What are you doing during the other periods? You know, so uh, it, it, there's so much confusion coming out of what the Fed really does or does not want to do or how they're going to follow through. 
it's almost like you wonder who's pulling their strings. And I wouldn't doubt that a lot of it has to do with the administration behind the scenes saying, hey, we've had rates so low now. But, of course, they have to go up eventually on, the t on somebody's watch. And, of course, the Fed says that this raising of rates will uh, help curb inflation. Not. Um, but uh, if that is their stance, it's hard for them to not raise rates when I'm sure the White House is saying, hey, what are you doing? You're not helping us out any. Of course, the Fed shouldn't be worried about what the... What the uh, what the president and the uh, or any other branch or part of the government is doing, the Fed should just focus on what the Fed is supposed to do. Uh, of course, they're doing, I, in my opinion, everything backwards. So, but that's my opinion. All right, so let's see. Do we have any questions on Twitch? We do not have any questions on Twitch. Do we have any on Discord? We do not have any on Discord. And of course, YouTube. Well, we don't have anything going on YouTube because it's just not streaming to YouTube, um, which is that sucks. Oh, well, all right, at least we're getting out to Twitch. All right, so let's get to our British pound, US dollar. All right, British pound, US dollar here. We've come into our extended upside target zone, which we already pierced on Friday, but we settled below. Now we're really having a good upside day with the momentum really pushing it towards the, uh, the bid. Uh, I think that on the daily basis, it's gonna be hard for us to get above 123.21. We do have this downward sloping resistance keeping the bear trend intact. If this interest rate rally continues, um, then dollar weakness, I think, will prevail as well, pushing this correction. Now, I, I think that even if we take out, right now we're pretty much at the buffering point with the British pound as far as if this is just a correction, we should start to consolidate and come back towards support at least for a little while, technically. Um, fundamentally, it's pretty much in that um, same uh, uh, boat. Uh, the question is, is what are we going to do now that we can, we're hitting these extremes? If we to get up and challenge 124.04 and trade above that, well, that means not only we take out a key resistance pivot point as far as just flat pricing, we also have a downward sloping resistance line keeping the trend intact that we'll be taking our, ourselves out of. Instead of coming out by attrition, we'll be actually breaching it um, through a rally and, and setting up most likely fresh buying. If that's the case, that means that we have the dollar really getting sacked. Because remember that the pound is one of the um, three largest components of the dollar index. It's the pound, the, the uh, euro, and the uh, Japanese yen. Those are the biggest ones. So, And since we have a breaking U.S. dollar Swiss market, um, that also kind of put in it extremely, that does help to push the uh, pound U.S. dollar higher as well. So. Um, it's, it'll be interesting to see because we are now literally coming into this point where we need to start to roll over and consolidate, and if not, then we really have a trend change in the short run, in the, in the, in the intermediate uh, term, meaning that the long-term trend is a bear, the intermediate term trend is a bear, the short term obviously on a daily and hourly basis is a bull. If we continue and we get above a dollar twenty four oh four over the next week or two, that would be no longer any type of indication that we're going sideways. Now, it could be setting the upper barrier for a range. Um, it may not be overly bullish, but what it does mean is we're setting probably up to put a new raised ceiling and then come back and consolidate a little bit more instead of just being an overall bear trend. Uh, that could be something that we settled. We gotta remember we have elections coming out in the US. There's a lot of things going on globally. It's, they may start to cancel things, so meaning that whatever's been driving these trends, whether it's the upside or the downside, whichever market you're looking at that has been sustaining a trend, which so many have because of what's going on in the world, um, we may start to come into a sideways uh, market. Doesn't mean we're not gonna have swings. There's gonna be opportunity for market to capitalize off of market movement. However, you're gonna have to be more rational in how what your expectations are as far as um, target points. I might have been changed now for the yen, the euro, the pound, and all kinds of other currencies because of the way that we are now reacting, especially we have a rallying interest rate market and we have a Fed that just raised the interest rates another three quarters of a point. Well, that's, there's, a, there's a divergence there as far as what the market's doing and what the Fed's doing. The market rate is based off of what the Fed does and the market rates are going the other way. That could be an indication too is that there's a lot of competition among the banks for um, what little money there is to be had. 
Um, so that means they're probably leaning on the lower end of their of their spectrum of what they can let, what they are willing to lend out at versus what they want to lend out at. So I would think that whether even if it's not necessarily the best of creditors, uh, credit borrowers, that they are probably because they know that things are going to go higher no matter what. I mean, we're relatively at low rates anyhow, so no one can really complain unless we kept raising rates for the next couple of years. Um, but people aren't used to it. We have a whole generation that's used to paying next to zero for interest rates. Well, guess what? That's not normal. <laughs> guess what? You're going to have to deal with the reality every one of us and everyone else before us has always had to deal with, which is the cycle of interest rates and actually paying for the use of money. There's a risk factor that has to be paid for, compensated for. So that being said, we're looking to see it press resistance up into this 120, towards 124.04. If we start to come back, and especially if we take out the low from yesterday, or not yesterday, from Friday here, I would say this is a solid, this black line is a solid pivot point. Two reasons. One, it's the last uh, a higher move low. Also, it rests pretty much right along this upward sloping support line, keeping the short term corrective rally intact. By attrition, we could take this out if we just went sideways from where we're at right now, but it's also very likely that we come up towards this upper resistance band and then come back and start to chop and wedge and then we'll figure out are we going to break out to the upside in which case if we do then I think we could have a good chance of extending this rally way beyond 124.04. We would have to have a, a rallying bond market still in 10 year market and oil suppressed and a couple other things to really make that happen. Not that it couldn't happen. But I would think that those are the factors that we would need um, in order to ma manifest that. Uh, so, and that's where we're at. So, we have any questions on Twitch? No, we have no questions on Twitch. What about on Discord? Any questions on Discord? We have no questions on Discord. All right. Okay. Coolio. That's that. Let's go to the US dollar Swiss, US dollar CHF. US dollar Swiss, we took out critical directional pivot today. Overall, this market had been in a bull market. Obviously, it was new, big neutral for the past uh, four months, and definitely over the past couple of weeks has proven to be leaning towards the bearish end. Uh, even when the dollar was strong versus uh, many other currencies, it started to have trouble with the Swiss. The Swiss is no longer a flight to quality. However, um, it is a very big currency and one to watch. Uh, one of the things that really bothers me is that when you look at it over the past three weeks, we've only had four up days in the past three weeks um, and even relatively up days here was a pretty much neutral day even here there wasn't much of a pullback or here these are two pretty similar days outside of that it's just pretty much red 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 you almost can count on over the past three weeks that you are lower from the prior close um, the next day so and that right now seems to be following that pattern as well if we settle below this critical directional pivot, it is a very negative signal. I mean, you can see on a weekly basis that we had, this is where we've been consolidating for a while, which was between 90 cents and like 93 cents. For the past um, four months, we've been above this 94 cents up towards parity, and now we're bobbling right around this 94 cents again. Now we did have this high here. The question is, is are we going to find support? If we don't find it soon on a daily basis, pretty much now, then, I mean, this is a pretty steep decline in trend also. Then we have these lower targets to look at from 93.42 down to 92.52. This comes into the upper part of the consolidation of this range trade there. Very rational chance that we could continue to slide if the trend is lower. Uh, maintains the lower posture we could um, maintain a break that gets down to those levels so otherwise if we're going to start to turn around um, I think that at least in the short run especially because this um, slope this slope is so steep excuse me my mouth is so dry all right so since this slope is so steep you can see that it took out this critical resistance but look at how the slope of this line is even if we just go sideways over the next couple of sessions, we're going to come out of it. We need this is a very it's not maintainable to be that bad, especially because there's no real reason for it to be getting crushed like this. There's no significant geopolitical news between the U.S. and Switzerland to really 
put this into place as far as central banks and whatever. I mean, yes, there's a tug of war going on, but not where you would think you would have this kind of reaction. So interesting to see. As far as looking lower, you know that we're looking for a much bigger uh, continuation. If we sustain a trade, I would below here. I think you need to settle below this line right now. If we do that, that really confirms weakness and extended downside activity going towards those lower areas that we just showed you. Otherwise, I think, I mean, longer term with us raising rates in the U.S. and more excessive than in Switzerland or in the EU, it doesn't, it's, it's unfathomable for me to understand how we could possibly not get back up to parity over the next few months. So that's something you want to be careful of too is don't get caught in a bear trap. Um, if this market snaps back to the upside, you can see how the velocity of these moves are. Like they go slow and consolidate only for a little bit at the bottoms or at tops for just a quite just a little bit. Otherwise, it's boom, 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 boom. You know, and they're caught covering a lot of ground. You're looking at a five dollar, a six dollar basis handle move. And these currencies, um, what, let's see, we go once, twice, three times almost four almost five times within the pattern of four months you have that kind of volatility that is really extreme so I would say that most likely we are going to get a chance at seeing a pop up to here the only way I get bullish is if we take out this downward sloping trend line here and get above this 97.38 with a close a close above there then I could say that we're probably going to make another run for parity US dollar JPY US dollar JPY has come down into our downside corrective zone. The question is, is it going to hold or is it not going to hold? Uh, well, the, we, we know that even if the Fed starts to ease off of how much they raise rates, uh, the Bank of Japan and what have you, they have not said anything like they said that they would, whatever, before it was way below 130. We are real close to that 130 target. Pretty funny how that is. I would say that if we can st continue to see the slide in the dollar versus the euro and the pound, especially if the euro does start to take off in a, in a big way, we'll probably see another big sell-off in the yen. It wouldn't be crazy to see us get down and touch this 128.56 area and then bounce. Overall, I'm still bullish to U.S. dollar JPY. It's only a bear in the short-term trend. Even the intermediate trend is not even touching off a bear signal yet. So... Um, it has been a violent move to the downside, but then also markets go out like they come in. This market has been just railing for months on end, and especially with a lot of really extreme surges. Plus, it capped out at almost $10 higher than the, the line in the sand that the Bank of Japan and the Finance Ministry of Japan had drawn um, months ago. So, And that's now that we're coming closer to it. It'll be interesting to see if there's any reaction whatsoever. Maybe because it's close to that target area, if it stays in a consolidation, they'll leave it alone. Um, so we'll we'll have to see. Very interesting. Watch the numbers, and um, be very cautious if you are short. Being a bear in this market, just know that the bulls can snap this thing back very very quickly. I would be cautious selling. I would look for rallies to sell um, with your with a valid sell signal than trying to sell it in the hole right here, just because. I think that when this thing goes bid, it's going to go bid fast. If you notice that no matter what, we, even when we had corrections, the, the when the real trend comes back, it doesn't take a lot of sessions for it to regain, regain a lot of ground. So we'll see what happens. We don't have any numbers right now to uh, go by um, as far as if they're already out for the day. But we'll see what happens with uh, the, when the Asian markets open uh, this evening and how the Japanese yen starts to go. Australian dollar, U.S. dollar. All right, Australian dollar, U.S. dollar. This one's maintaining a fairly decent slope. It's not too aggressive to the upside. Could be a little bit lighter and it would be a little bit easier to maintain. Um, but this is a nice correction that we've had in the uh, Australian dollar, U.S. dollar. We're right in the middle of the zone between 69.83 and 70.78. I don't know if we really can sustain a rally here. Um, I know we've, we've taken out the downward sloping resistance line for the trend. I think what we're doing is we're just extending the correction before we start to go maybe sideways to lower, meaning we're not going to really bang new lows, but that we'll make new lows and then consolidate up, get a nice little rally and consolidate, come make down, make some new lows, and then boom, 
rally take out resistance and just chop around I can see that really happening with the Australian dollar US dollar there's a lot of geopolitical reasons for that um, and also some commodity based reasons for that as well so we'll have to see how things pan out especially with uh, with China and deliveries of uh, raw commodities so to the upside I do think that right now the 70 70 to 70 78 will cap the rest of this upside momentum in the short term I don't think it's gonna hold for that long but I can see us having a bounce and at least coming back to test below 69.83, somewhere in this area. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if we don't and we get a sustained trade above this upper end of the zone, well, then all bets are off and we're targeting 72.84. So, all right, let me see. I think we had a little pop-up on Discord. Okay. Never mind. Okay, so now to the downside, I think the one you have to, the thing you have to do is watch the low from Friday. This also is where we come up off of a severe sloping upside rally. That's where I think it's not sustainable, at least in the short run, very much longer. If we start to pull back and take out that low of 69.13, then our downside target zone of 68.57 down to 68.12 becomes a very viable reality. Um, anything can happen, but that's probably where you'll see that get down to and then if you're gonna have a consolidation period we start to consolidate around there holding the lows or just kind of bobbling um, if it fails from 6812 then look out below baby we're making new lows on the daily basis and that confirms a lower move high looking to make a lower move low in the longer term sense of things so um, very good any questions here on twitch no no questions on twitch no questions on discord all right moving right along New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and for those of you that are just joining us, if you haven't done so already, please like and share this video. If you would not mind, please, thank you. All right, so we have New Zealand dollar, US dollar is pretty much like Australian as well. This is another one that came out of its uh, long-term downward trend, uh, crossing this resistance line, um, downward sloping resistance line. However, I don't think that that really means very much. I think that well, all it's doing right now is helping to exacerbate a rally that then pff, it's going to fall back off the map once again. Geopolitically, there's a lot of reasons for this one. Um, and the economics uh, of what's going on in New Zealand also do not bode well. So the only thing I could see is that if they think, if the world thinks that the, uh, what's going on in the U.S. is worse than everywhere else, especially New Zealand, well, then you may be able to hold New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar strength. Otherwise, I think it's going to be heading back to support. So this downside target zone over here of 61.95 to 61.62, I think this is very reachable and easy for us to, ma to, to manage. Maybe it starts to go sideways. Only if it falls below that do I start to get bearish once again. Um, as far as a, being a breakout above the 63.78 and going up to 65.51, yeah, it's a little bit of a rough rough one there. I would think you're going to have to have some really exacerbated moves in the 30 year to 10 year um, and uh, a couple other ones too, that's for sure, where the dollar is getting just really beaten up because this whole rally, it's not that the dollar is that strong versus many currencies, it's just that the other currencies are that weak. Um, and New Zealand dollar, that's the problem, is I don't think that they have the, the true value to sustain any real buying interest by anybody because unless you know something everybody else doesn't know, um, right now there's just no, it, it's, a, it's a depreciating currency with all kinds of other things that they're having issues, especially because of supply chains and business disruptions and taxes and, and, na and their national sovereign debt. So, and these things all add up, and I think that's why you'll see it come back to test support. All right, now let's look at the U.S. dollar Canada. Any questions out there, guys? Nothing on Twitch, nothing on Discord, okay. All right, U.S. dollar Canada starting to firm up today. You can see that it came through our 127.82 downside uh, target. Only went down there for a little bit, and now it's... Um, trading pretty much higher up towards the higher excuse me higher and stronger in the upper end of its range I could see a bounce coming here um, I'd be cautious anywhere else that it could possibly go after uh, after that little after a little bit of a bounce um, just because this is a limbo currency before even the last couple of weeks which have trended nicely as a bear 
um, it's it's been because of some extreme trading. Otherwise, this has been in a very big holding period, just going sideways, bouncing between the higher end and the lower end of the range. And right now, it's been I think just basically hanging out at the upper end of the range. So, um, but let's just say for argument's sake, our target zone holds. We have a decent upside day today. We need to get back above 128.68, not just sustain a trade, but close to give us um, the inkling that we'll head up to 130.02 to 130.07 range. What's the likelihood of us getting a very big rally right now? Anything can happen, especially if you have a big sell-off in the interest rate quadrants. If we start to see a big rally in the dollar versus the pound, the euro and get back on track with things like it was before. Um, as far as that trend is concerned, well then the US dollar Canada could explode to the upside. Uh, so I'd be cautious selling where this is at right now. I just don't think that uh, they can keep on beating up these other markets. Well, maybe they can. Maybe this is going to be this will help push this, these, this correction that's going on right now. And then when everyone starts to bail and be like, oh geez, wow, I can't believe how far this thing's gone. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh wait, you know, so we'll see what kind of volatility we get out of this. I don't know. Um, the numbers uh, on Thursday are going to be important. The employment claims and also unemployment on Friday. Those are the two big shocker, shock waves for this one. And also CPI. CPI next week will be a big uh, number too. So how we trade into these numbers is going to be very interesting. Right now, you have U.S. dollar strength in Canada where you don't have it in other markets. So that's the irony too is that we're putting the brakes on today after coming right through our last uh, bottom part of our uh, support band and now we're pretty much doing nothing for the rest of the day I would say so um, at least that's the way I'm looking at it it's the way I'm calling it so any questions out there you guys in twitch land or in YouTube oh, sorry, YouTube you're not on um, okay so I will give you a little Look, see at the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin starting to fall back once again. It is in a rally mode, making higher move highs, higher move lows. It made a new high on Friday. Now it's coming back. It's a really thin trade. It's amazing how much volume and how much volatility Bitcoin used to have. Over the past few months, it's not on most days, it's not looking like there's a lot of liquidity there. And that's something that I would also kind of take into mind. Um, liquidity can help force some moves both to the upside and to the downside and I think that you really need to pay attention to that um, as far as Bitcoin is concerned um, and as far as what kind of trend we have well we know the overall trend is down past month and a half it's been slowly kind of building uh, but I believe that this is just a calm before the next storm and that will fall back off the map uh, going back towards that lower 20,000 um, area probably by Christmas. So um, don't have any buy signals, don't have any sell signals, but that is my bias. Let's look at the, the tail that actually wags the dog, which is Ether, Ethereum. All right, Ethereum is starting to look a little weak as well. And yeah, this one here, as you can see, had a much better price action to uh, the customer and user, customer, whatever you want to call them, the holder of the, di the digital currency, than uh, Bitcoin did. In fact, I had, uh, if you watch some of our videos last week, I mentioned that too, in um, the week before, is that you get more bang for your buck out of Ethereum. So for the same cost, you can, whether it's a small day or a, a busy day, capitalize um, with actually even rest less uh, risk. So, um, but anyhow, we'll see how this uh, shapes up. Once again, the numbers at the end of the week will probably uh, shake up the other markets. Um, interestingly enough, uh, where uh, certain markets go, the cryptocurrencies go as well. Um, but uh, which is an interesting correlation because we didn't, we never had this before, even when the cryptocurrencies first came online. But more and more, we're starting to see these correlations. Right now, we don't have a buy or a sell signal, um, but we did have this one buy here that pushed us right away up toward just shy of our target actually so I just um, figured we're done as far as a rally is on this one uh, I think your correction here is actually more likely than a rally and if we do settle lower on the day here then I can see it getting down to this 1274 area 1181 area alright let's look at 
XMRUSD. This is the little engine, the woulda coulda, that's for sure. Um, I've been saying this for for a long time. Like this one, it, you can see how the, the crypto sector is in a big way go where Bitcoin goes. Um, but not on every uh, tick for tick, every moment. It's not like that. Otherwise, all these other ones would just be a cheaper way of trading Bitcoin. Um, but they do have their own spirits or minds of their own, if you will. This one here, look at how it got beaten down in June, and now it's just boom, boom, snaking its way, making its way. That's what Monero does. So even if these other cryptocurrencies start to fall apart, like in a big way, I would stick with Monero. Monero, if you have that one, that's a keeper. Um, I have some myself. Um, but I don't think that it's going to have a monster rally, but I could see it getting sustaining a trade to the upside as long as there's not that big of a sell-off in the U.S. stock market um, or a couple other markets. I think that the uh, British Petroleum here should have an easy shot at getting up to 190 and then even 200, So, um, which would be pretty much fair value where I used to look to buy it would be between 180 and 220 and then sell it out at 383, excuse me, <coughs> around 380 um, down to 320, somewhere in that area right there. All right, let's look at the Doji just for giggles. So uh, you can see how this is just in limbo going sideways. I don't know what in the world is possibly supporting this uh, currency or who is buying it. Um, but uh, whatever, it is what it is. It's in limbo. It's not going anywhere. I think the biggest thing you have to watch out for this is um, if you do have it, get out. <laughs> and then uh, don't look to buy lower. It's just a dog. And it just, I mean, this is really, really beaten down. I can see it where this is, we're kind of at that point where when the cryptos first were much higher and they started the break, we are at that plateau ledge where if we're not going back up, we're going for another wave down. And that would really crush this market because now we're talking about it going from six cents down to less than a penny. And then even even worse, probably in the, uh, you know, much, much lower um, numbers where we get down, the Doge USD would probably be below two cents, you know, below even a cent, you know. Um, and if that's the case, this stuff becomes worthless overnight. So be careful with the Dozier. Um, Ethereum and XMR, I think, are where you can go to. All right, let's go to the Euro, US dollar. Go back to start, go to the end where we started. All right, still trying to inch along here. I think that what you're going to see is we have a lunchtime trade setting up. And this will be interesting for you guys that are here on the video. Um, it is uh, 11.40 Chicago time, so we have two hours and 20 minutes until the bonds close, and the 10-year close on the futures. When that occurs, I would think that's when we're going to start to see the currency spin off in a big way. Um, are we going to get a rally? Are we going to get a break? I don't know. I think that the way you have to gauge it is is that um, we're most likely going to get a rally first, and then turn around probably after we've gotten up towards this uh, one, yeah, 103.70 area. So, okay, well, that is that. We have no questions on the video. So I just want to pull up something for you to check out real quick. Um, let's see, here's this. If you haven't done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like button and also share it on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and stuff like that. Check out our company page, Forex Trading Unlocked Incorporated. Uh, we have quite the following over there and we always put releases of uh, information and things that we don't always do on social on the um, live broadcasts here. So, And also check out the book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns, available on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle versions. The chapter on money management... Money management alone is worth 10 times the price of the book. So um, definitely check it out. You can read it for free on Kindle, too, if you're, one of, if, you're one of, if you're one of those Kindle Prime, I can't remember exactly what it is, uh, types of subscribers. So with that being said, I want to say thank you guys for checking in today. I'm Teddy Kekstet from Forex Trade Unlocked. We will see you very, very soon. You have a great day.